Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Happy Saturday. Sipping Saturdays right here at the outhouse. Yes, this is the new compound. It is the outhouse. And as you see, we've got a special guest. This video is sponsored by Ferguson. I'm going to start off with that. Let everybody know Ferguson and General Pipe Cleaners. What a great combination right there. Now, if you're new here, welcome to the show. If you're looking for something specific, you might jump over to the channel. But if you just ended up here, man, you might just jump in, have fun, and man, look at what all we're talking about. There's not just me. There's a lot of other experts in here. And, and I have General Pipe Cleaners in the house, a Mr. Dave. How we doing, brother? Oh, I haven't had this much fun in months. You know, we have already shot a video, so <laughs> man, y'all need to make sure you check that out. But we're gonna have fun because this, this is a Q and A. So if you are new here, man, put a Q in front of your question. Put it in the comments. Love to hear what kind of questions you got. And you know, we're, we're talking about general pipe cleaners today. We're talking about tools that can help you do your job better. And I've got to tell you, one of my favorite things about tools is they're getting safer. And looking at some of these tools that we got to mess with this morning, that we're going to be playing with coming up, man, this is some good stuff. So number one, Dave, man, welcome from Pittsburgh to Dallas. Yeah. Is there a little temperature differential today? Uh, like about 20, 30 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a little hot down here. I got to tell you, if you think you're hot up north, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta yeah. come down here to know that you're hot. Yeah, what would you say? Something about 85 degrees up there, and people are like, Man, it's hot. Yeah, right. Well, for September in Pittsburgh, 85 is hot. Yeah. But yesterday it was like 106. I'm walking along. I'm trying not to stand in one place for very long because I thought my, my shoes would melt uh, and blew me to the, to the so sidewalk. It's funny you mention that because literally last week I'm watching, I'm a college football fan. Y'all notice the burnt orange today. Sean Strong. Sorry, brother. Not about you today. It, it's all about the horns right there. Uh, hook them horns, Texas Longhorns playing Alabama today. So we'll mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that. But the cool thing is, uh, on the college, one of the college games last week, one of the camera guys was standing on the field on the concrete, and literally they showed him, and his the the sole had melted off the bottom of his shoe. I totally it. it gets that hot here. Just letting yeah, you know. Totally. So we're gonna jump into the comments real quick, and guys, remember. This video is sponsored by Ferguson. We teamed up with them because we love what they do. We love what they do for plumbers, the communities that we're in, for plumbing companies, and general pipe cleaners hooking us up with them. Got them in the house talking about, and the FR100 is a tool you need to see, and it's going to be pretty cool. So I had fun shooting that video this morning. So we'll talk more about that in a minute. I'm going to jump in the comments real quick and welcome some people in. Jason Smith, good morning, sir. Uh, where are the six people? You know, we'll, 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 we'll hit 50 just here in a minute. As soon as we go over 50, we'll start telling everybody, like, put in here where you're from, what you do, uh, and what do you do for a living? Where are you located? So love to hear all that from you. Uh, do you like general pipe cleaners or Spartan better? Well, I got to tell you what, I own a lot more general, so think about it that way. Uh, that makes it really easy. Street Rats, good morning. How are you? Ah, uh, spring sick dog says no problem. What's up, Kenneth Maxwell? Architectural sheet metal in the house. Love what you do, man. Great content. I gotta tell you, no, number one, look, we need to get together. Uh, I need to see about actually getting here and doing this on Saturday, so that can be good. Mr. Sean Strong, moderator extraordinaire. Uh, guys, Sean is. Did you really put Boomer Sooner in my comments? I don't know that you can block a moderator. I don't know. I need to look into that. John Strong, good to have you in here, brother. Uh, had Sean in here before for a plumber from Nebraska. James Cernak says, just finished my third month as a helper, getting my apprenticeship license Great. soon. And get your apprenticeship license as fast as possible because that's where your hours are start being tracked. Slick Rick, Sack Dog says, uh, new here. Welcome to the show, brother. Uh, James Sarnax is ex excited for the future. I got to tell you what, if you're in the trades right now and you're not excited for the future, that there's a problem yeah. because it's hard to find good plumbers. I mean, yeah. you're you talking to, about that this morning. Yeah. And you talk to plumbers nationwide. All over. And um, they all say the same thing. Wholesalers say the same thing. Everybody's having a hard time getting qualified help. So we need to get more people on these programs. 
uh, you know, becoming apprentices, taking these, uh, you know, plumbing school programs, get them with, uh, you know, they have the skills so they can go out there and do the right thing. And and, that's key. And guys, that, that is so big because look here, the, the average median age for plumbers, I don't remember if, if it's plumbers or master plumbers or whatever in Texas is like 57, 58 years old. That's right about where I am. Might be a little older than that. But that's right about where I am. And what that means is to me, all the people getting into the trades right now, you are going to be the entrepreneurs of the future. And by watching and learning and, and learning, I tell everybody, look, you want to be on the top of your industry, get up every, every day, study, study the things that we're talking about. You can get up and watch my videos. It's all about new tools, materials, technology, and equipment. And that's what we're talking about today. So, man, this is going to be fun. Uh, Dustin Cook says, morning, all. Randy says, good morning, crew. Happy Saturday. Uh, morning, y'all. Sean's put the link in the Discord group there. Guys, if you have questions where you want to learn a little bit more, go to the Discord group. Go to the subreddit. Uh, there's a link to it. All kinds of cool stuff. Now, we're getting enough people in here. Do me a favor. Go ahead and tell everybody where you're from and what you do. Uh, but first of all, you're from Pittsburgh. I'm from Pittsburgh. Dave Dunbar. I'm the National Sales Manager at General Pipe Cleaners. And uh, we sell through plumbing wholesale. We've got factory reps all over the country. We've got 52 of them that we manage. And they do a great job for us. They can give service after the sale. They can actually demonstrate things ahead of time. It's like uh, another layer of expertise. Because sometimes you go into a wholesale, like, they've got 10,000 lines. I mean, I, I don't blame them for not knowing everything about every line they have. But if you need help, we have people local. We have people that speak your language. They can come and I can show you hands on how this stuff works. And just, the, you know, like what Roger was saying, it's all about the technology. It's all about being able to use the tools in the, in the field to make money and to help the customer. Make, sh make sure that, that you're yeah. looking at all those tools. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, you know, remember, guys, questions, put them in the comments, put the queue in front of it for cheap sakes, just like this, just so you see. Hey, could you go over plumbing fixtures and the different grades and qualities of those plumbing fixtures from builder's grade to premium? I believe my customers don't know about. I, I got to tell you, and I look, I, I used to do a lot of new construction. Now, I don't anymore, so I don't study and look at fixtures like I did. But, you know, it's like going down to Walmart and buying a drain cleaner. Just gonna stop right there. I'm gonna say anything bad about Walmart. <laughs> or going to Ferguson and buying a professional drain cleaner. Now, when I do fixture work as a residential service company, okay, so not a builder, as a residential service company, I'm looking for one thing. I'm looking for a brand name that I trust. General Pipe Cleaners. How long has General been around? 1930. We were started in 1930. We've been around for a long time. It, yeah, guys, we're coming up on 100 years. Yeah. Uh, I mean, coming up quickly. Uh, and, and, and a lot of the big plumbing manufacturers, same thing. 100 years. This, this is that time when it really became prevalent. And this is a company that's been there for the long haul. So it's not like you're going to buy a product today and next week, oh, they went out of business. It's like, look, they've been around forever. They're doing things right. And, and there's a reason. What, what do you think it is about general pipe cleaners? What, what, is, what is it that they do best? Well, here's the thing about general pipe cleaners. We're a family-run business. Mm -hmm. Okay. And well, recently, we had fourth-generation family come into the, uh, to the ownership. Okay. So, so there's that. How many companies actually survived with generation? Really. But I think even more impressive is the fact that we've had fourth generation union workers down in our factory since about five or 10 years ago. And again, who brings their grandkids, great grandkids into a company unless they actually feel comfortable and they feel like they're actually part of something better? A belongingness that, that that actually permeates the whole company. That's pretty cool. So, so we when we put something together, I mean, basically, um, we want somebody that's going to use it for the rest of your life. We want you to pass this tool on to your your kids. 
We're not looking for sales. We're looking for 30 year customers or more. Cool deal. So that's our philosophy. And that permeate that sort of permeates the whole company right from the top down, just because of the, of the nature of the kind of company we are. We're looking for the long term. So we don't want to tell you something that's not going to work in six months. We want you to use that for a long, long time. And so, you know, I think that's one of the things we do the best is that we're always thinking long term. We want to be the toughest tool one and live up to that. Sean Strong says, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, guys, if you like what we're doing here. Uh, put it in. As you see, I've got Dave Dunbar with me from General Pop Flames. So pretty cool. Uh, Flame Ninja says, I get to take my journeyman test on the 25th. Brother, study, study, study. Great. I remember one of the first times I went in for my test, and I guess it wasn't even that. I'd taken a few tests. So I, I'm, I've got every endorsement in Texas, so I've taken pretty much every exam they've ever had. But the cool thing about it is I remember talking to, I think it was, it was Lisa Hill one time, and she said, Roger, some people send their plumbers down here to take a test, never having studied, just so they can see what the testing facility is like. And don't do that. Uh, there's so many study things in here that you can do and learn to help you. Grow. I say do that before you get down there. Make sure you know. I know, Sean, that, that is just not right. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the fixer in the house. Good to see you, brother. Happy Saturday to you. Uh, yeah, Sean, I think you got kicked out of the house or something. Ricky Yepes says, Rick from Tampa. So we got Tampa, Florida in the house. What are some crazy things you snake out of drains? Well, my, my craziest is probably <clears throat> squirrels, birds, uh, enough, feminine, enough feminine products to stop Kimberly Clark for a year. Uh, that, that's kind of, yeah, it says we can block mods. I love that. Uh, but, but, but guys, uh, tell me this. You, you, you talk to a lot more plumbers than I do. Yeah. What's the craziest thing you've ever heard anybody? Well, oh, rats and other types of animals, things like that. That's a little gross. Um, prisons, they have some interesting stories because, you know, guys with a lot of time on their hands and they, they're not always interested in, you know, making sure the plumbing works properly, if you know what I mean. They'll flush all kinds of things down the toilet and put it down the sinks, so you know, clothing, other, other large inanimate objects. They, they're always pushing interesting things out of their plumbing. Um, but yeah, paper plot products is, is the most common. Yeah. roots, of course. Yes. Big roots. roots are yeah. huge. Roots are huge. And, yeah. and we'll talk about that in a minute. Some of these new products that they're coming out with that, I mean, just chop stuff like that up. Yeah. It, it, it's really interesting. Yes. For sheep sake, says I'm a first timer here near Austin, Texas. Uh, as you see, we've got burnt orange on in the house today. Uh, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, but I now have a new handyman business. You know, look, an electrician by trade. Yeah, if I was an electrician, uh, I'd get out of that business too. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, look, I, I, I love electricians. If they were any smarter, they'd be plumbers. So, you know, like, that's why I like them. But here, here's what I say. Look, the handyman business is amazing. People ask me all the time, Roger, why do you hate handyman? I don't. Okay? I don't hate handyman. I hate handyman that do a disservice to their customers by doing plumbing, by doing electrical work, by doing HVAC work that should have a licensed trained professional doing it. Handyman, I wish I had a handyman here because of the property I just bought, because there's a lot of things I don't want to fix. It's not my specialty. But, you know, you've got to look at the world and say, okay, and here's my deal. Handyman, look, if you get a niche where you, they are working on what they can work on, you, you got a full-time gig right there. Yeah. Stay busy. At it. You don't have to worry about permits and inspections and insurance for, for stuff like that. So the opportunities can really be phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Discountplumbingpros.com. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Blackjack M45 says, entire apprenticeship. I've cleaned zero drains and pipes. I want to learn, but the union doesn't teach that. And Blackjack... Some unions do. Boston does. Minnesota does. Milwaukee does. Chicago does. There, there, there's some that Pittsburgh do. does. Pittsburgh does. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of good things about the union. Okay. Don't get me wrong. People ask me about the union too. So I hate the union. I don't. 
I hate my local union here because of the services they should have provided for me and didn't. And when I talk to the national union, they say, hey, we have no control of that. Well, then you're not controlling your union. It's like McDonald's saying, well, we can't help that this McDonald's is selling gravy and chicken fried steak as a dinner, not a sandwich. It's like, well, that's not McDonald's. They should have control. Here's the thing. I remember when I first joined the union, I was on a job and one of the plumbers, Larry says, uh, we're at lunch one day. And he said, man, I, I'm, I'm getting out early today. I said, really? How come? He said, like, I got a plumber coming to my house. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> what? He says, there's a plumber coming to fix my toilet. And I'm like, you went to the union training program and you don't even know how to repair your toilet. He said, God, no, they don't teach us that. Really? Blew my mind. United Association, wake up. You're, you're teaching plumbers that have a license that don't even know how to fix their own freaking toilet. That should open somebody's eyes. Uh, Chris Reeves says, good morning. How are you? Uh, check out Ferguson General Pipe Cleaners. They have some awesome tools for you. There you go. Free Traps says, Houston, Texas, plumbers, apprentice coming up to three months on the trade. So do me a favor and leave another comment in there and let me know, how do you like it? You've been in it for three months. Now you travel around the country. You talk to plumbers everywhere. You talk to new people getting in. You, you, you talk to people that have been in it forever. What do you think? Do, do people that get in the trades like it, love it, know enough about it, or, or are they just getting in to see what life could be like? I think if you stay for more than six months, you like it. I think you like the challenge. I mean, it's, it's a problem, it's a problem solving type of job. Even if you think you've been trained right and you have all the right equipment, I mean, every job that you come up to is going to be different. Analytical. Yeah, yeah. So you have to be able to sort of roll the punches. You have to be able to be creative, think outside the box. And a lot of people really, really like that. They like being inventive. They like to actually modify their equipment based on, on their needs what's going on so they see themselves as being in control of, oh, of oh, we, we, don't, we don't see ourselves as being in control we are in control sure. okay yes to an extent but that's important because so many people in this world aren't uh -huh. you know you go to a desk job someplace you're, you know, you're in somebody I, else's control you are definitely in somebody else's control so they determine how much of a raise you're going to get they determine what you're going to work on they determine if you're going to even continue to work there you know yes you, if you're a contractor, if you're a, a plumber, you get to decide all that stuff, really. I mean, when it comes right down to it, you have an ordinate amount of control over your life. And there's a lot of people that really, really like that. So most of the plumbers I meet that have been in the business for a while, they love it. Uh, okay, there's elements they don't love, of course. There always are, I mean, on every job. Yeah, of course. Uh, on every, every relationship. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. If you go to college, there's certain things about college you don't like. If you've got a job, there's certain things you're not going to like. It's life. Life is not all about loving everything you do 100% all the time, each and every day. Yeah. I work for myself. There are still days that there's things I don't like to do. Yeah, because you don't get along with your boss. Right, right. right. I don't like my boss. He's <laughs> horrible. But, but, but I admit that. I, I know that. So, yeah. But my thing is, too, and I think you're in a very unique position, today because you get to work with residential service plumbing, mm -hmm. some commercial. But residential service plumbing, that's your bread and butter. Right. Yeah. And guys, that's Sean Strong. I mean, if he's not talking about Oklahoma, he's smart. But, but the thing is, ask Sean because it's, I mean, we are the superheroes. We say, and when they, when they get an emergency, it's like, well, I need somebody now. But I think those kind of tradespeople, they take pride in their, their everyday life. They love what they're doing. And it's amazing. You know, I like to, my, my wife gets embarrassed at parties and other gatherings. I'll wax you for it about the plumbing system. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you go back to the Sumerians and in this valley civilization five, six, seven thousand 7,000 years ago, they had plumbing figured out. They knew how to keep fresh water separate from sewage. They have flushing It's kind toilets. of a big deal, y'all. Just going to throw uh, that no, out. There. Just, 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 yeah, that's cross key. connection. That's, just, right. we'll stop there. <laughs> But I mean, it, and, and having a good plumbing system, it actually prevents more disease than penicillin. Mm -hmm. Plumbers have actually saved more lives in the world than all the doctors combined. You bet. Because it's all prevention. It's not, it's not after you get sick trying to cure you with penicillin or something like that. It's key. It's critical. 
And I would go so far as to say that life as we know it can't go on without functioning plumbing. Absolutely. Without a flushing toilet, you can't live there. Absolutely. You know? So it's it's something that I think is, is crucially important. And you're doing such a service. And when you realize that, when you see the customers, when you see how you impacted their, their lives, see a smile on their face when you're leaving, when before they, they couldn't live in that house, right? Mm -hmm. um, you've completely changed their life. Not every profession can say that either. Yep. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people out there that are twirling away at some job and then getting a paycheck, but they don't actually see the results of what they're doing. They don't know if, if they're helping people or hurting people big term because God only knows everything's compartmentalized. So a plumber gets to see the results of their of their good work and they're more in control of their lives and 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 I think it's yeah, most of the plumbers I meet really like what they do for That's all those sweet. reasons. Yeah. Uh Jason Smith, journeyman service plumber out of Houston, Texas. Thank you, sir. Isaac Jimenez. Hola from Arizona. Como estas? A residential plumber here. Cameron Williams, Plant City, Florida, working out in Orlando, building Epic Universe, third year electrical apprentice, 21, started as soon as I got out of high school. Dude, I love that because I, I tell people, and, and Cameron, I'll, I'll teach you something because this is something I used to teach first year apprentices. So in the union here in Dallas, I was an instructor. And it's funny because I didn't come up to the union, I got into the union later. Uh, at the time they were recruiting, they recruited 62 plumbers or 60 plumbers. I was the only plumber two years later that still was in that group, but I moved up. I did really, really well. But when I became an instructor, Cameron, what I want to tell you is, even as an electrician, I, I won't hold that against you, uh, but if you'll start right now as an apprentice, putting up a dollar a year, okay? You're going to get two or three raises a year. Put up a dollar each year, put it in your 401k, invest it, put it up before you ever see it on your check. That way you, you don't get used to it. You don't like, and I miss that money. I want that. I want that $33 back every week. If you do that over five years, you're going to get to where you are putting up. Okay. Five years, you're going to be putting up good money. Okay. You're going to be putting up $10,000 every single year. Okay. Five dollars an hour, two thousand hours a year. Do the math. If you stay 30, 35 years in the union, you're going to get a nice pension. IBEW's got a good plan. UA's got a good plan. One of the things I love about the union. But if you will invest in a 401k, you're going to have a million dollars put aside that nobody else does. And I've done the formulas. I've shown it. I used to show it to my classes every year. You have an opportunity to control your money. Now, again, you've got a job in the union. People control how much money you make to an extent. Because I made union scale about the first year or two after I joined. By the time I got out of the union, I was making double scale. But I was a superintendent. I was a general superintendent. I was doing really, really good things. You can do what you want to do. Just because you got a job in a union doesn't mean that's all the money you can make. So learn that, get better, learn how to use the tools around you. Terrence Chapman, uh, tradesman, good to have you in here. James Cernix of Chicago, Illinois, over here doing service work. I love that. Isaac from Arizona, residential plumber. Henry, jack of all trades and master of hot fitting. Squirt, good to see you. Bill Perrick, my specialty is soldering copper, but it seems. All of these companies are moving towards peg spot, keeping copper, copper at a minimum. What areas of the industry should I move towards that have a higher demand for my skill? Eric, I would say start looking at med gas. Okay, as a med gas, it's, I don't even know that they're using PEX or, or, or ProPress or any of that yet. But as med gas, it's going to be brazing, which is a close brother of soldering. Learn how to do it really, really well. Uh, okay, Blackjack M45 says, do these pap cleaners come with a camera to see the buildup you're getting rid of? It's part of a package. That's yeah, a right. about that. yeah, yeah. Well, in, in drain cleaning, we say that uh, one size does not fit all. You know, uh, you need different things for different circumstances. For example, small pipe, you need a small cable or something small to put on that pipe. Otherwise, it's going to get caught. 
if you put that in a bigger pipe, well, that's going to have too much room to roam, and it's not going to be effective. So it depends on how the device works, uh, where they're transferring torque, where it's a mechanical action, whether it's a jetting action, high pressure water cleaner, or whether it's a clock shaft type of thing where you can speed. Uh, all those things have their own strengths, and you don't want to dilute them by trying to actually make one device that does everything. Cameras are usually separate. However, with both jetters and flex shaft devices, you can actually put a camera in behind it and you can watch what you're doing. The thing is, you want to be able to take that camera and use it in other ways as well. So you don't necessarily want it to be tied to that device. So it gives you more flexibility, actually, having separate devices that you can use in a synergistic way, that you can put together, that you can actually make it through. So they're both stronger because of putting it together. And hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, one size does not fit all when it comes to drain cleaning. And, and we found that, uh, you no, know, we just try to make each part of the puzzle stronger so that you can use them together, but uh, but they all have their own. You know, and, and here's the thing about it. It's, you don't use a pipe wrench with a hammer. And I, I don't know every plumber in here is gonna say, yeah, you do. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna argue with you, it can be done. But here's the thing. You've got different tools for different things. No, they don't come with a camera on them. You want to run a camera. You want to you want to clean the drain out. You want to unclear the clog. Yeah. Then you want to either run a camera or a hydro jetter. Maybe run a hydro jetter first, then run a camera behind it to show them, look, there's no clog. There's no break. There's nothing visual that we can see. Guys, that helps you with your warranty. Yeah. Okay. It really, really does. It's perfect. Flame Ninja, you're welcome so much. Uh, as a comment, it says, I've removed dentures, hairbrushes, <laughs> car keys, and a debit card. I have, uh, I've seen the dentures. I've never had to remove those. I did do a partial one. Reading glasses was a big one. I, I got them out and kind of rinsed them off and had them laid. She's just like, drop, she's like, yeah, drop them in the trash can. <laughs> she says, I don't want those back. I will never put them on my face. Uh, Okay, so a rat trap. I, I guess we're talking about the union. Guys, look, there are, un there are good things about the union. I, I want you to understand that. If the union called me today and said, let's talk about a sponsorship, I would be like, yeah, you have a great education. There's a training program there that is amazing. Could it be better? 100%. Because they don't teach a lot about residential, about residential service. And that's some of the BS, uh, bull sewage story that I was told about the local here oh we're going to do that we bought the land we're building a training center guys that was six years ago they did not broke ground yet so it's it's a joke but some of the unions are teaching residential service i think getting into the union if you're going to be a hand you're going to be a plumber you're going to be a superintendent you're going to be a foreman you don't want to own your own company it's a lot of headache it is a lot of bs to a whole different bull sewage level but the thing is, some of us are made to, hey, I want to do my own thing. The cool thing about residential service is pretty much you're, you do your own thing. You're in your truck. That's your company. You run it. You're on the job. You, have, you don't have Dave standing over your shoulder saying, hey, Roger, you're not doing that the right way. You learn the right way. So you teach your apprentices the right way. And you pass that down into me. That is huge. Okay, here we go. Question of the day. Bulb 271602. Any new flex shaft products coming from General? New. Well, today we just made a video on the yes, SR100. Did. And, um, you know, that's changed a bit since we first, first brought it out. But we are expecting new products, a smaller product and a larger hmm. product within the year. So, uh, this is huge. But the thing is, here's, here's the thing why we started with the SR100. We're talking to people like yourself mm -hmm. and plumbers that people I run into all the time. Say, well, okay, if you had a device that was lighter, safer, or did a better job, what size pipes does it need to go into? What's, what's most of your work? Well, 85, 90% of it is within two to four inches. Okay, so two to four inch. And how far do you have to go? Well, you know, 50 feet, 75 feet. Maybe a hundred. hundred, but, right. but Maybe. most of them. They're saying about 90% of them are under 75 Absolutely. feet. So we said, well, okay. We came out with something that was 75 feet. We'll do two to four inch. And does mm -hmm. a really good job in both two and four. 
can go in and you can cut roots. You can go in a two inch pipe and you can actually, you know, get grease out and things like that. So we tried to hit the middle of the target first. And then we were going to work out from there as opposed to bringing something yeah. really small out first that you could only use in small pipes or something really big out that you'd only be able to use in big pipes. We went for what most people said they were doing most of the time. So that's the FR100 that we have. And uh, again, there will be something smaller and something bigger year. But uh, but we think that's, that's a good, really good start that we have. It does most of what you do. And, and here's what I like about it. There's things unique about this. You know, look, there's other flexible products out there. One thing I like about a flexible product, it's the closest thing to a real drain cleaner. Mm -hmm. You've got a brush that is brushing the inside of the pipe, y'all. Or chain. Or chain. Yeah. Chain, chain knockers. But it's not just a little metal head that's big around that yeah, is yeah. poking a hole through a clogger or off clogger or, or whatever. This is These things are designed to hit the pipe, and you're not going to push it through so fast that you're, you're creating a swirl. It's going to clean as it goes, guys. I, I love these. I really do. We can do a bunch of other things, too. I mean, you know how we always think of jetters do a really great job when it comes to actually getting grease out of a drain. And afterwards, you go through with a camera, and you look down at the pipe where you just went through the hydro jetter, and it looks like a new pipe, right? Well, these things are almost as good. I mean, it's, you would almost think that somebody had been down with a hydro jetter when you look after somebody went through with a, a flexible shaft device. It's that cool. good. And they can also do descaling, which I know is not drain cleaning, but on the other hand, it's something that comes up a lot for you guys, and you can make a lot of money doing it. So that's that's, that's something you, it's very difficult to do it with a, um, a traditional snake style machine. So, right. Blackjack M45 says, Do you know of any training videos to learn how to scope, locate, jet clean pipes properly? Yes, uh, we have a bunch of them on our website, even exactly. drainbrain.com. Um, and uh, we you'll find it all. We out. must have a hundred videos, and uh, we also have a, a YouTube station. It's called Drain Brain Twelve. Okay, and you go on either one of those places, and you look, and you'll find all kinds of training, all kinds of training uh, videos. A lot of them with me on there, but uh, but still, um, we just to make that. You know, you learn how to do it right. That's yeah. what it's all about. You heard me say it earlier. New tools, new material, new techniques, new technology every day. So learn to do it. I guess this video is sponsored by Ferguson. Uh, we teamed up with Ferguson.com. And a lot of it's for relationships like this. Introducing us to vendors, bringing in new product, showing people new product, how to use it, how to use it the right way, how to use it combined with other products to give your customers the best value. <laughs> I mean, when you go in, you want to do the job right. So between Ferguson.com, General Pot Cleaners, because this is what this is all about. So thank you to both of them for sponsoring this video. It's our it, pleasure. It allows us to do what we do, and that is fantastic. So thank you. Uh, so go watch those videos for how to use the product. Streets Wrap says, I love it. My stepdad got me into it. The first company I was with, I didn't like so much. They wouldn't do anything uh, up to code. But this new one I'm at, I'm enjoying a lot of the guys that I love that. Yeah. So here, here's the thing. And I've got a deal. There, there, there's a link on my YouTube channel where I put together this, this little free mini course to find out what kind of plumber do you want to be? And I say plumber, you can use the word electrician. You can use the word HVAC. But when I got into the trips, I had no idea. I just knew I was getting in to be a plumber. And Sean Strong and I have talked about this before. I had no idea there's residential and commercial. Never thought about it. Nobody ever told me about that. I had no idea there was service and new construction. You're building something, you're fixing something. I had no idea there was a union. There was non-union. And then you know, the, the open shop companies operate different than the union company. I had no idea about industrial. So you know, I talk about these things, so it's neat, but it's the same way. Working for that first company, if you are afraid of touching poop, and you go to work for a residential service company and they put you in a drain cleaning truck, guess what? You're, you're probably going to touch poop every now and then. It's going to get flung on your shirt, it's going to get flung on your jeans. The wrong flight shaft makes it a little bit different. A little cleaner. A little bit cleaner. A lot cleaner, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> a lot cleaner. But, but here's the thing is, if that's your big fear, 
you could get in new construction plumbing and never touch poop for 30 years. So you've got to, you've got to understand, are you getting in the right spot or getting in with the right company? So I do. I love that. Micro or Sean Strong says, Micro says, don't follow your passion, but take your passion with you. You don't have to love or even like what you do, but you can still be passionate about doing it. And I love that because even I was in San Antonio speaking yesterday. And of course, I always talk about plumbing. It's what I am. I are a plumber. But the fun thing is, I walk off stage and I'm like, dude, you are so passionate about what you do. It's like, look, my eyes sparkle. I light up. I get excited. I love what I do. I love what I do. And I remember, it's so funny because I, I lived in Austin for a while. I'd gone under work on a sprinkler job. And I worked in a nightclub at night. I was a bouncer, bartender, and all that. And you'd walk up to people and they're like, so, so, so what, what do you do? What do you do all times? Like, I'm a plumber. Well, you know, when you're trying to pick up a girl and you tell her you're a plumber, she's like, ooh, you know, and kind of back away. And so I started telling people, look, I'm, I'm in construction. Oh, that's a whole different thing. Oh, cool. You know, you build buildings. Yep. And then I realized, you know what? I love being a plumber. And it got to where, you know what? If I meet somebody that when I tell them I'm a plumber, they back up three steps, just keep backing up. So it is neat. And you can be passionate. I love that, Sean. Thank you. About whatever you do. He says, he says, yeah, service plumbers are the heroes. I really love what you said too. Don't follow your passion, but take your passion with you. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought, you know, there's I run into a lot of successful people out there, not just the plumbers, but in other, other businesses as well. And a lot of them have a lot in common with Roger here. Basically, they're very passionate about what they do. And uh, that passion allows them to sort of take the circumstances of their life, the obstacles that come up, and use them for uh, opportunities for growth as opposed to excuses for suffering. And that, that's key. You have to have passion to do that. You have to have passion with what you're doing. It's huge. And, and if you can do that, if you can be passionate about what you do and turn everything that happens to you into an opportunity for growth, you'll be successful no matter what you do. I find that salespeople or what I'm trying to manage as well as plumbers, and business owners, and anything anything else that's out there, that seems to be the key. And, and, and I like Jim, but look, you've also got to be educated. Mm -hmm. You've got to understand what you're talking about, or else you're just a motivated, what it, what's it called, a motivated idiot. You know, know what you're about and, and look I'm, I'm glad that sean brought that up because sean yeah. does know what he's talking about that's, yeah, that's right. why i've had him in here and done this before. uh architectural sheet metal says i have my time in the union and out there there to serve the underachiever looks better on them but the good worker gets overlooked and and it can happen that way uh you know i listen to people talk about the union and when i hear the guy say look I, I get laid off all the time i don't like it you're the underachiever because when a superintendent needs to cut crews down, he keeps great people. So yeah, look, there's good and bad things about the union. I agree. If you want to get an education, yeah, it, it's great. You want to do commercial, it's great. You want to move up, it can be great that they've got the, uh, the UA University. There's good things about it. So it is it is what you make it. Uh, Rich GT350R says, Phillips Holder Medgas. I love that. So I guess you're Philip. Uh, having, having any extra endorsements is great for you as a plumber also. Jonathan Noose is a uh, journeyman plumber, Gumbrell City. Do you work for rub -a -dub? Just curious. Architectural Sheet Metals has got a great video idea for when plumbers and metal roofers cross paths. Well, you know, brother, I got a barn that needs a roof. We've talked about this. We can cross paths right here. Uh, got some laughing here. Dave Comanche says, oh, wow, Mr. General himself. So, so see, your reputation precedes you. All those videos. You know, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> uh, no progress in med gas. That I don't agree. Oh, no ProPress. Okay. And, 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 okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, the first time I used ProPress was in med gas. <laughs> At Medical City in Dallas. But now I got to tell you, it was on the intake air for the med air compressor. So it was not really med gas, even though it falls under the med gas system. So, yes, you are right, though. 
And I had this conversation the other day with somebody. Uh, Bulb 271602 says, I carry Spartan 81, 100, 300, K102, K204, and Microdane M40 camera on my van. That's fine. That's a lot. You bet. Yeah, yeah, yes, lot. There's more than one product. There is, and there's more than one brand. And thank God we're in an industry that has a fairly high quality. You I bet. Mean, Spartan and Rigid and EO and Gorlitz, a number of big companies out there that are all very good. So it makes us be better. That's the way we look at it. I mean, I'd, Competition rather, be, is all yeah, I'd rather be in an industry where there's a fairly high bar you know, to jump over as opposed to something where we're the only ones making a halfway decent product. And so, you know, here's what's neat about that, too. Over the course of time, say you move on to own your own company and you've got to start buying equipment. You know what equipment you're going to buy? The equipment that works the best for you. Hey, I never had to put this one in the shop. Yeah, I never had problems with this. Hey, this is always lighter and easier to carry. This one did a better job. So I love that. You're like, hey, look, we understand. Right? There are different brands out there. Nobody's saying, hey, I'm the only plumber in town. Yeah. Couldn't do it. So, man. Figure out a company that does things right and stick with it. Andrew Reynolds says, I live in Dallas and I want to become a plumber. Where do I find a company that would be patient to work with me? A Andrew, I've got videos about that. Uh, go through my videos and, and watch how, how to get a job in plumbing, how to get a job in plumbing today, uh, how to get started as an apprentice. So there's a million things you can do. But the thing is, do the research, go, go to the free course I talked about a while ago, find out what kind of plumber you want to be first. That's a great way to start. Randy's laughing at both of us, probably. Rich says, I'm a union and residential don't go together. Oh, uh, homeowners don't want to pay for what it costs. You, you know what? I got to tell you, I'm going to disagree with you there because I've been in the union. I've seen the charge out rate. And look, I was union. When I started my company, I was, you know, not the first year until I started hiring people, but then I was union because I wanted them to have the insurance. I wanted them to have the benefits. I wanted my guys to be taken care of. Guys, look, I'm pro-union, believe it or not. I just think certain things about the UA suck. Uh, if I'm 100% honest. But that doesn't mean I'm anti-union. It means if you want to get in a certain way and learn certain things and have these amazing benefits, it's a great way to go. If I could work with the union and go through and fix some things, to me, I would double the size of the union in the next five years. Okay. Because I think it's got a great training program. I think it has a great benefits package. I think there's a lot of things about it that are amazing. And, and those of y'all that are saying, I hate the union. If you've never been in the union for 20 years, like I was, you've never been open shop for 20 years, like I was 23 years, like I was. You, you can't talk about both sides. I can tell you about both sides. I've lived it. I've been part of it. I've been up to the upper level, director of operations for a union company. And I have been an owner for a non-union company. I can talk intelligently about the sides of it. There's benefits to the union. There's also problems. They do protect the weakest employee. There's nothing wrong with that. Somebody needs to be protected, but the weakest employee should make the same amount of money your best employee does. And that's where there could be things fixed. Uh, Said Comanche has a question for Dave. Longtime listener, first time caller. I'm, I'm glad you called here. Thank you very much. Uh, what's coming from General? We're seeing the chain knockers from a lot of brands in recent years. Would love to see them from General. Things that make you say, hmm. Yeah, uh, we're looking at that. Uh, we do have the clog chopper that we have on the front of our. Uh, Traffic device that nobody else has. You know, we found the clock chopper worked really well with our snake style machines at about 170, 180 RPM at about 2,000, 2,200 RPM. They're fantastic. So that's a game changer right there. If you put somebody else's chain knockers, the code or Renzi or somebody like that behind our clock chopper, you have a completely different unit out there. It's, it's, it operates completely different. So that's one thing you could take a look at. Really. Clog choppers like that. Uh, as far as uh, other things, we're, we're we have a new version of our microscope out, which is a little stiffer. You can push it more, 40, 50, 60 feet. It's actually perfect to use with a flexible shaft device or something like that that you want to put both things down the drain at the same time, like we were talking about earlier. 
So that's uh, that's a bit new. Uh, and you know, here's the thing too: is that you know we probably made 25, 30 improvements to our equipment just in the last year without really telling anybody, because we're always trying to make things better. And, uh, and hopefully, if if you have any ideas or you have any issues or something like that, we listen to people like yourself. So yeah, let us know know what you're looking for. But uh, as far as the next big thing, you can have to wait and be surprised. That's what it's all about. <laughs> I'm from the government and here to help. I love that. Howdy. How y'all doing? Hit the like button. Yeah, guys, look, if you like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like Dave, hit thumbs down. But hit, it, <laughs> hit it twice. That way it goes away. Uh, you, you know, uh, there you go. Sean, put the link in there. Thank you so much. There's the link right there for drainbrain.com. Yeah, and, you know, we have a really good website, and we've got a lot of videos on there. We've been making it for the last you know, 15, 20 years. So uh, we have some some interesting stuff on there. Check it out. Blackjack M45 says, always learn so much coming to on your page. Thank you for bridging the gap in my union training as a fifth year out here in Colorado Springs. So I love that. So, man, do me a favor and, and leave a comment in there. Does your union train residential service? Do they teach you drain cleaning, how to rebuild toilets and stuff like that? I remember I was in the class that was given the task of teaching that it's one chapter of a book and they're like, don't spend more than an hour. How do you spend three hours, four hours training people on drain cleaning and toilet rebuilding and, and everything else and, and really teach them? It doesn't work. Plumbers. Training is the key to becoming successful in any field. I believe pushing vocational training is really important to the success of our future generation. I, I got to tell you, I think Texas is doing a phenomenal thing. Texas has, it, it's now in the, it's approved by the TEA, approved by the Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiner, I believe approved by TWC, the Texas Workforce, Workforce Commission. You can literally, in high school, that has adopted the syllabus, has the right involvement with a plumber, and I involve myself with schools. A student going into high school, if they choose this course, their junior, sophomore, junior, and senior year can take plumbing. And then there's hours where you go work with students, you do things. When you graduate, if you graduate, you pass this class, you are now eligible to go take your tradesman exam immediately as that is a $52,000 a year job because most tradesmen make at least $25 an hour. So man, something that is definitely worth checking out. Uh, Safe to she says, and then Sean Strong. And Sean says, Roger, Roger sleeps about a half an hour a night. His passion keeps him busy, keeps him going. The man never stops. And that's what it takes to be successful as he's become. Man, it, it's that and, you know, having amazing people around you. Uh, the, the neat thing about it is I've got a fantastic team. Kevin Orr, what's in the hat? What's up, brother? Says, unions leave a bad taste in my mouth. Not good experiences. They support people that are more than fundal, fundamentally flawed. Happens open shop, too. Uh, I, I, man, I'm just, I'm being honest with you. I, I've seen it on both sides. I, I do think the union should crack down more on, I'm going to call it non-productive labor, but you know, you tell people to step up or you take care of them. Right now, the union takes care of them. Uh, Can you fix it? Says so just finished descaling a ten-story building, four-inch main lines. I got poop on my eyeballs, face, shirts, and hair. Eyeballs, face, shirt. I bet that you got it other places you didn't even mention. I'm just saying. Uh, but had on all my PPE, loved every minute of it. I love being a plumber. No, number one, look, I'm going to offend that. As, that. That right there, that's what it's all about. The thing is, yeah, I've got poop on me before. Did I go <laughs> home and celebrate it? No, I went home, took a shower. It washes off. I never wanted to become an electrician because I didn't want to get shocked. That doesn't wash off, okay? <laughs> that, that You will remember that. Uh, so oh, yeah, no, I just, I did, I, I, that's, that's part of why plumbing intrigued me. Hey, and, and remember, those of y'all that know me know I got in because a friend of mine, his three brothers were plumbers, master plumbers. His dad was a master plumber. He went on to become a master plumber. 
And the cool thing about it, well, I love if he'd have got me an electrical because his dad and brothers were electricians. First time I got shocked, and then like I said, I'm done. Y'all have fun. I am <laughs> out of here. So I know what your deal breakers are. Jason Smith says, I went to a customer's house yesterday and an unlicensed plumber installed something. He took out a six-year-old Navian and installed a customer supplied A.O. Smith tankless from Lowe's and the reason why he changed it out. I have no idea. First drain sink was a Super V handheld. Look, look, that, look, look I, that, that is the gold standard. Okay. I mean, that is, you look at everything everybody else has built, they're rebuilding that. And look, being r and d ripped off and duplicated, you know, that, that's nothing but respect. So they changed the tankless because of the water pressure. So that, that somebody should, uh, see, I can't even say my, my filter kicked in. I have friends and ex-wives <laughs> that would be so proud of me right now because that normally does not happen. Yeah, somebody should report that person and, and I would even file criminal charges because that's pretty much theft. Uh, there's the link to the sub, I mean, the Discord group. Uh, Sean Strong is the king of Discord and he runs that for me. He is amazing. Sean says, uh, we've got channels to ask for help. Crazy thing is we found and for showing off your work you've done. Also got a channel for you to plug your own thing. Come join us. Yeah, guys, go, go ahead and talk about what you do. A lot of times I'll, I'll get messages on YouTube. I'll already put in, hey, this is great. Go put it in the subreddit. Go put it on the Discord group. And there's the link to the subreddit right there. Uh, always something to see. I and mean, it's true. So drain cleaning. We, we get people that, that get into plumbing. And... I used to love teaching apprentices about a drum cable machine yeah. and you need to be taught because they're dangerous. New technology is not, not as dangerous. It's not quite as dangerous. Uh, if you leave it the way you want it, if you leave the uh, guide tube or the you know, guide spring on and use the power feed, then it's really, it's not that dangerous anymore. Uh, the way we actually, Show these things now, and we ask the plumbing wholesalers to leave the spring the guide tube on the front of the power feed on. You put that down the hole, you put that down the clean out, down the pipe, whatever it is you are, and you put it in there so you can bring back out the power feed. Put your hand on that, and you can still feel the cable. When they first came out, I thought this is never going to work because I need my hand on the cable. I need to be able to feel what's down. I need you bet. to know what's going on. Well, I did it a few times in the field of working with people. No, actually, I can feel it. I can feel it. I can see when it's starting to back up. I can see when it's tensing. I can see when to sort of back up. You can listen to the motor. That's right. You can listen to the motor and you can watch the cable. Touchy things people don't know about. The thing is, if it has a guide tube on it, then you can push the functional limits of the machine far with a guide tube on there than you can if you have it in your hand. Because if you have it in your hand, you're going to have to back off if something starts to tense up. So you can push it further, you can get through more clogs, you can do more work. And add addition, benefit, it's safer. It can't come out and grab you by the arm and fling you around the yard. Or and whatever. that's what I say, look, guys, cable machines are, look, they can be. I'm not saying all of them are. Yeah. It can be. Because like he's talking about, you can, you can use the foot pedal, mm -hmm. another amazing thing. But you can watch it. And, I mean, some of the other brands, you got to stand there and hold the drill motor. It happens. Like it's I've mm -hmm. seen something like that. Yeah. And and when you're holding that and you're you're still trying to push and fill and and run a camera with it, it, it you don't have enough hand. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just this this is neat. I like this. Yeah. Matt Strickland says I'm looking to buy a speed router in '92. Oh, or is there a better product available? With three quarter inch cable that you would recommend? What we are talking to Dave Lombar, the Drain King. So. Let yeah. it rip, brother. Uh, well, Matthew, first of all, three-quarter cable, I would probably go with the Speedreader XL as opposed to the 92, just because I, I like that machine better. It, instead of having a spring distributor tube, it has a cast spring distributor tube that holds the cable a little bit more firmly. Plus, it's easier to, to replace that drum. If you have three-quarter inch cable, it might be the case if you're going over 100 feet every once in a while, put in a, another section if that's the case, it's going to be easier if you have a speed reader XL. It's a little bit more expensive. 
but it's very similar to the old Speed Reader 90, Speed Reader 91, and it will last a long time and it will give you good service. So that's that's one I would actually recommend if you if you're wedded to the idea of three quarter table. Yeah, you know, and, and I like this. You said, look, it costs a little more. Yeah. Look, guys, you're investing in you. You're investing in your future. If you are if you are buying the cheapest tools in town, mm -hmm. you're getting what you pay for. Yeah. In fact, we ran into somebody at a trade show a few years ago uh, up in Indianapolis. You know the wet show? Mm -hmm. Been there. Go to, you know, they have yeah. all the drain cleaning technology. If you ever want to know what's going on in the drain cleaning world, you want to see whatever's new, the wet show, usually January, February, I think. This year it's January in Indianapolis. We ran into this guy. Always Indianapolis. Always Indianapolis. That's right. Uh, we ran into this guy and they had bought one of our machines, basically a Speed Reader 91. Similar to the XL, I just recommended for that. Uh, he bought it in 2003. And he said, yeah, it's doing great. It's doing great. And he, we're talking to him a little bit longer. He said, well, he still had the same cable in it. Okay, so he's using the same machine and the same cable since 2003. And I talked to him in 2019. I've talked to him since he still has the same machine. How much money has he made on that machine? Well, yeah. and, well and not even that. Take the cost of the machine. Yeah. So say, say it's two thousand dollars back when he bought it. Yeah, back when he bought it. Yeah, twenty years, a hundred bucks a year. Hello, I know. Can I get ten of those? Uh, I mean, it's like okay. It, invest in yourself. It's amazing. Yeah. So Comanche is awesome. Thank you, gentlemen. Cheers. Cheers. T a double n y a says not in the trades. Love your videos. Looking good as always. Is it for you or me? I mean, mean you know, as always, I will take it. Hey, it I am not. You but I'm, because hey, this is my first time. I am not. But, wait, but you got videos too. So, you know, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Dustin Cook says, all men are created equal, but only the finest become plumbers. Yeah. Matt, we could end right there. I, I mean, it's like, drop the mic. I'm, I'm like, yeah, if, if, I, if I had one here, it didn't fall. But, but you know what I mean? Uh, Dustin, uh, look, I, I agree with you. I mean, and, and women love flowers. Uh, we lay pot better than anybody. Well, I mean, that's what we do for a living. We we, we unclog what's got you stopped up. I mean, look, look, we are plumbers, electricians. Is this cable? This, this, we yeah, this, we're on cable. We're, 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 we're good. We're good. Uh, you, you ever see that show, Grumpy Old Man? Remember uh, Burgess Meredith at the end? He, he's, he's talking. He's, he's talking. That's where I got that line. He's literally he's looking at Ann Margaret across the street or something. He's looking out the window and he's, he's saying things. And he says, I've made, I've made more pop in this town than Wabash Plumbing Company. And I have never, I've never laughed so hard in my life. I was trying to wait till you put the water up to your mouth to see if I can get you to blow it up. But I thought, I'll be yeah, nice. Thanks, yeah. You bet. I'm really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. It's easier. Uh, Bones says, I'm a master plumber. Good for you, brother. Where, where are you located? Uh, I do, guys. I love figuring out where everybody's at because, you know, I tell everybody, look, connect with each other, click on their channel, subscribe to it, learn more about them. We got some amazing people in here. Man, Sean is all over Instagram and does some amazing things. So learn who these people are, connect with them. So cool. Uh, Zavia Stanley says, how would you pat out an electrical fire uh, with the right fire extinguisher? First of all, kill the oxygen. Let's have any fire. Do not throw water. Yeah, don't throw water on it. Yeah, you notice I did not say that. Lujami uh, Beg says, how are you, sir? Zavia Stanley says, how do you fix a leaky gas stove? Well, I'm going to take this one. Uh, it's like anything else. Get, get in there, soap it down. Find the leak. What is leaking? Is it a thread? Is it a connection? Is it a push connection? Where do you have a leak? What kind of leak is it? Figure that out. If you figure that out, then you know how to fix it. And they all, they're all different. So figure that out, and it's amazing. I want to remind everybody, this video is sponsored by Ferguson. Now, I've been with Ferguson for three years now, and I love the fact that they still sponsor our videos because – Working with them is great because of what they do for plumbers, plumbing companies, the community. Mm -hmm. Go check out 
all the cool tools. And when I say tools, I don't just mean hand tools. I mean, informational tools for plumbing companies on their website. They are literally trying to help plumbers, the plumbing companies, the communities, everything that we do get better. So go check out Ferguson.com. And this video is also sponsored by General Pop Cleaners. Reason being, oh, guys, they're, they're what we do. It's what it's all about. Yeah, so we, um, we appreciate Ferguson. We appreciate you. Thanks and, a lot. For this. And it. the website is? Drainbrain.com. So it's drain like a floor drain and brain like in your head dot com. It's one of those things that seemed funny about 20 years ago, but you know, once you once you get it in your head, you won't be able to get it out. So drainbrain.com. It works. Uh, Zombaziza, the ZZ says, uh, how do you, oh, greetings, Roger. I was looking at the one right above it. Greetings, Roger, and thanks for all you do. L look, I get to do what I do because of every one of y'all. And that is the easiest way to put it. I am, I mean, we're coming up on 562,000 subscribers, coming up on, are y'all ready for this? Coming up on 100 million views. Okay, that, that's a lot of views. Okay, now the neat thing about that is that's 100 million people watching. It's not just a view. So I want y'all to think about that, but I owe that to y'all because y'all are the people that come here, jump in, communicate with us, talk to us, and, and do different things like that. And, and to me, that's what makes it amazing. So thank you. Uh, Car, you fix it. it. Says, what's the history behind the name General? I don't know. Yeah, uh, the founder was not a general in the army or armed forces or something like that. I think he just picked it because, uh, generally speaking, it was a good name. It was available. I like the way you took that together. It's pretty good. Yeah. But I'm bum. It's, it's here somewhere. I just don't, don't know where. Uh, so, so okay. So we got to shoot a video a while ago. Yeah. And. It's all about the flex reader, the FR100, and I love that, but there's more to it than just running a machine down and cleaning a drainer. A lot of plumbers stop there. They'll run a sewer machine, whether we're talking cable, whether we're talking the, the flex reader, they'll run a drain down, the water goes down, or, or, or run a cable down, the water goes down, they're done. Is that really where it should end? No, I don't think so. Um, I've talked to a lot of people in the last 25 years, and um, frankly, if they have drain cleaning trucks on the road to, to operate as lead generation devices for their pipe, uh, pipe replacement business, pipe relining business, pipe bursting business, things like that. They're always looking for a way where they can actually do one better for the customer by, by actually replacing it. That's a good example. I'll, I'll say somebody, uh, they come out to a house and they clean Drains clogging up all the time. They look at it, they, they run a snake through and it goes through and everything's fine. They put a camera down there, there to find out what the heck's going on because it's been happening a lot. They find out that there's some side, some side, a, a dip in the belly. Oh, what are you gonna do there? Um, you can't fix that with a snake. You can't fix it with a, a jetter. You can't fix it with a camera. You have to sort of go in and you have to replace that sectional pipe, right? Otherwise, gravity is not going to be working to allow that, that drain to, to, to open, you know, to keep, keep open. So there's a lot of things that you have to go take the next step to find out what's really wrong with the situation. And that's where all the big money is as well. You think somebody doesn't appreciate it if you actually find the root cause of the problem, you know, after coming through and just making it out, you know, taking two or three extra steps to go down and, and find out what's actually wrong with this pipe. And what are those two steps? Well, you go through with a snake, it starts opening up, and you could sort of go through with a jetter and you clean off the inside of the pipe. Why? Well, because it's still dirty in there. And if you want to inspect the pipe with a with the pipe inspection system with a camera, you're gonna actually have to clean the sides of the pipe and get it all cleaned out. And when you go through with a jetter and you're done, it looks like a new pipe down there. So then you put a camera down, then you can fully inspect what's going on. You can get a really good look at it. And, and that's where you find some opportunities to do the right thing for the customer and also to you know, get a better, a bigger job for yourself, a bigger payday. So we, we actually recommend using all the tools in sort of in a synergistic way, use them together. 
snake first, jetter, then a camera, and then you know, and you might have a flex shaft device as, mm -hmm. as either the first or second part of that equation if that's the right way to do it. And then you know, find out what needs to be done at that point. Uh, a lot of times, it's not just refuge that's stuck in the pipe that you're trying to get out or a piece of paper or something like that. there's something structurally wrong with the pipe it's up to you and you don't take that next step nobody actually gets the right result and, and i used to love it because as my company one of the things that i learned we did we ran a camera after every dry cleaning that's good we did it for our benefit Number one, my plumbers then knew, look, we got the clog out, we're clean, whatever it is. But number two, if there was a reason for it, if it if it was a break, if it was root intrusion, you can show the customer, hey, look, we got a problem, we got a problem right here. Now you've got an opportunity to go above and beyond and take care of your customer. But you've got to do that. You've got to take that initiative. So we made a camera part of the drain cleaning. Good run the run the drain <laughs> cleaning, get the clog, run a camera. Now you've either got an opportunity to say, look, there, there's nothing wrong. We proved it. Here's the video. I want to show you everything is clean and clear. You may want to hybrid with it to show them how clean and clear it is. But what systems and processes are you going through? What do you have to do? Now, one of the things about this tool, uh, that far, that far one hundred. Yeah, one, this will do on. three of those. Yeah, one hundred percent repairable in the well, yeah. not one hundred. You're not going to be able to it's repairable in the field. No, most actually, problems. Well, yeah, yeah. unless you've got every part with you, you yeah, there yeah. may be an issue. But for the most part, compared to the other tools out there, yeah. this is repairable in the field, mm -hmm. and it's not super complicated. Yeah. In fact, uh, you know, one of the first videos we put up on this device was our engineer actually repairing the flexible shaft, which is one of the most common things that happens in a flexible shaft device. It's a high have, speed device. Had it happened in one of mine. Yeah, it's a high speed device. If you get it rams, it jams someplace where it can't turn, you're liable to, to break the flex shaft. Okay. It doesn't happen every time, it doesn't happen all the time, but it happens enough where you need to know how to do it. Well, we have a 10 minute video on there. All you need is a vice. And some some vice grips, and 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 you're you're in good shape. You can actually fix this thing in the field. Uh, so that that's a huge thing. There's a lot of machines out there. You can't do that. Okay. But and the clog chopper complements the, the chain knockers. Yeah. yeah. And they these all go together. Yeah. What's the uniqueness of each one of those? Well, the clog chopper basically is round. It's ergonomic, and it will go anywhere you need it to go. Okay, so it doesn't get stuck. It's like putting a starting tool on the front of this. Again, it's operating at high speed and tends to bounce around, but you don't want it to get stuck. What we're finding is that if people get it stuck going around a bend or in a clog or something like that, that's where it's most likely to break. So the clog chopper keeps that from happening. It happens much less with the FlexiMuter 100 than it does with other devices because it keeps it bouncing around. Plus, the clog chopper is very sharp. We're finding that, you know, um, people were using clog choppers to do reading statements years ago, even with snake style machines. But you can use them with the Texas Router 100 as well. They'll bore through almost anything if it's a straight shot. And if you're doing descaling or a cast iron pipe, they sharpen themselves. So it's a really good tool. It's always been a good tool, even with our snakes. But with the Flexi Router, it's, it seems like they've come into its own. The uh, chain knockers, as somebody pointed out, yeah, we. Pretty much very similar chain knockers to everybody else but when you use them in conjunction with the clog chopper yeah it, it makes a big difference we wanted something that would be able to open drain you know what i mean the, the, the wrap on flexible shaft devices in the past has always been that you know you, you go through the snake or you go through the jet or you go through something and you open it up you get it moving and then you go through the flexible shaft device and then you can clean it up as far as we wanted something that for most situations out there, you'd be able to actually get through it with one fell swoop. You know what I mean? So that's why we made it a little bit more robust. And that's why, you know, with the clog chopper on the end there, it just opened things up a little bit and allows the chains to work. It will open up most severely clogged drains. Not everybody can say that. Okay. And a 5 sixteenths shaft and mm -hmm. chief. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. The chief has, has to sit, right? Yeah. yeah. 
That's not what most other brands are using. Well, some, some do. I mean, basically, that's a smaller version, like an eight millimeter. And, uh, and basically, ours might be a little bit more robust than everybody else's. That's why we can use it for, for four inch. A lot of these that are, sorry, Bill. Um, okay, I hit my all time. Yeah, well, I see. Seems like it's, it's really good. I didn't hurt it. Um, you know, if you have something that does like, you know, two inch or three inch, it does a really good job two inch or three inch, but you get it in four inch and try to actually cut a root. No, you can't do it. Ours can do that whole range, which I think is, is a real uh, advantage as well. Like I said, we're talking to people up front. I mean, they say, well, what do you do most of the time? Well, two to four inch, 35 feet or under. Here's the machine that will actually it'll go through a two inch pipe. It'll, it'll cut grease, it'll do paper products, things like that in a small pipe. Soft it, stoppages? Yeah, let's say it's something coming from the sink or something like that, yeah. soft stoppage. It'll do a medium-sized pipe, and it'll also do the main drain. If you have a four-inch uh, PVC pipe going out to the street or something like that, you can go through. And, so, and the stiffness of the shaft will help you get through a more severe stoppage. Yeah, and you get a little bit more forward momentum on it. So, all this basically, we, we build the thing so you can actually utilize the clog chopper. That's the advantage. And uh, we, we like it. It's, it's a good, good product. It, uh, it seems to be able to do a lot. We, we've had, we had a guy up in uh, Canada that was using it in before and after pictures, pouring pipe that we went through. And at first, you know, you, one little pinhole basically. I mean, yeah, which is what most drain cleaners do. Yeah. Like, so many plumbers, and that's where we got to running our cameras because I'd do it. I'd run a camera, I'd run a service machine. It's like, great, water went down. Let me run a camera. It's like, wait, there's a clog this big, there's a hole right here. The water went down to that level. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So, uh, what are you going to do then? Well, the clog chopper helped to get started, and then as it kept moving in, as it chain knockers were able to actually get rid of it. He, he was before and after. The after picture, it looks like a new pipe. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Oh, that's that's something that uh, you really have to cherish. That's going to make you a lot of money. And, and that's one thing I love about the flexible roofs because it's you're, you're cleaning the pot so much better than just a cable drain cleaner. And it does. It makes all the difference in the world. And it's, it's things you need to know about. And one of my favorite things about all's flexible roof is the foot puddle. Yeah. You have so much more control. And it allows you to free your hands up to run a camera right behind it or whatever else you need to do. Exactly. I think if you're going through or you're trying to sort of work your way through the end, it's easier to have your hands on it. You have a camera with it, then for sure you need your hands. What we recommend is you put it about 18 inches behind uh, the, uh, the chain knockers. And so you want to protect it. You want to have it so that you can see what the chain knockers are into. You make a surgical strike. And you don't leave it, you don't have to have this thing on all the time. I like a snake where you have it, you go on, you're all the way down. No, no, you push this down like a push rod until it gets exactly where it needs to be, and then you turn on, Brrr, go through the obstruction, go to the next one. And it's like when you turn it on, it's like having a weed whacker down the pipe. All you see is sawdust if you're going through a roof, more paper, whatever it is. It's, it's like all of a sudden, you all you see is dust, and you have to wait for it to settle down before you can see whether you actually did the job right or not. So it's it's an interesting experience using one of these things with a camera and the, uh, the microscope will, will go along with it really well. You can push both things down and uh, again, surgical strike as opposed to just running the whole thing, you know, uh, running, running it the whole time while you have it in the drain. Uh, this thing's operating at about 2,000, 2,200 RPM. What could go wrong, right? I mean, anytime you're running something that fast. You, yeah, there's movement, guys. Yeah, you, you don't want to have it running all the time. You want to Spot. I mean, a solid steel frame, the bigger wheels to make it maneuverability is easy with it. Yeah. We looked about putting uh, like steer climbers on it. Uh -huh. Didn't have to. The this, wheels are oversized. They, they allow you to go down. If you're going down a basement steps or something like that, you can get it. Yeah. It's easy right. to get around. Plumbers here says, I have worked with some of the cheapest brand tools and some of the best. I use what I need to get the job done and get it done well. And, and, and look, I, I hear stuff like that a lot. There's nothing wrong with buying cheaper tools. I, I, I make videos about, look, when you're first starting out, if that's yeah. what you can afford, right, get in the trade and learn stuff. But once you get that job, mm -hmm. create a, a weekly, I'm going to put up 5% of my check, 10% of my check, whatever it is, 
one thing, when it was time for me to go into business for myself, I pretty much had everything because I've been investing in myself and in my tools for years. So when it was time, it's like, well, what I don't need anything. Like, what do you mean you don't need anything? I've got my own leak detection equipment. I've got my own camera. I've got my own drain cleaner. I've got my own. And, and it's really funny because I talked to, again, I didn't even hear before Dustin DeWeese, and he says, Roger, what makes me 100% efficient is I have every tool on my truck I need. Guys, invest in a tool, and, and it may not be the most expensive tool in the beginning, but get there as soon as you can because you want one that, is dependable and safe and warranties and you can repair in the field warranty problem do you see a lot or are there well, is there what we'll put it this way can't guys really repair in the field that uh, they're like hey i gotta send this in and what can plumbers do to not make that happen I do a seminar. seminar how not well not that one okay, okay. I, I have one called uh, how not to break your stuff and um you know, we've been in business a long time, as we mentioned, since 1930. We, we see a lot of things come back to us that are broken. Uh, we talk to a lot of plumbers. Uh, there are some plumbers that never break their stuff. Gee, uh, and I can talk about this. So go ahead. Yeah. And there are other plumbers that break it sometimes. And there are other plumbers that break it all the time. And no matter what they're buying, no matter what brand they're buying, no matter what quality they're buying, is, is some people break stuff all the time. Some people break it every once in a while, and some people never break it. And they'll tell you when, when they're buying something from you, they'll say, you know, you'll never see me again. I never break my stuff. Well, really? How? Why? Well, it's common sense. It's like I do this whole seminar, but it really what it comes down to is slow the hell down, take your time, have situational awareness, and, and go easy on this stuff. Uh, if you're uh, if you're always in a hurry, if you're not paying attention, then what's going to happen? You're going to break snakes. You're going to break flex shafts. You're going to break camera heads, which can cost you thousands of dollars to replace. So, you know, I've worked with people that never break their camera head. Well, how do they use it? Well, they have one hand real low. If this is, you know, this is the hole that you're going down. They have one hand real low all the time. They're pushing it like this. Or they have it under control. And they always have one eye on, on the screen. They see where they're going. Because how do most camera heads die? Well, somebody rams them into something. A camera head is not a drain cleaner. Let me let me start right there. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate that. That's, and that's what that's how most of them die. That by because people are trying to use them as a drain cleaner. Oh, let's just brick there. If I knock that out of the way, then this drain will be open, right? And yeah, it'll, it'll open two it. Words, one stone, you know? Yeah, well, then you end up, instead of actually breaking a snake that might be $100 or something like that, you break a camera head, which is like two or $3,000. Yes. So, you know, frankly, we all know what to do. And, and you know, if you're a professional, if you're out there doing the stuff, you know what to do. Just slow down, be patient, have situational awareness, and know the machines. Know where the functional limits of your machines are and don't exceed them. And, and that's really, I can, that's, that's my whole seminar in, in three minutes. It because, makes sense. Yeah. So, so that's the first thing. Um, if you do break a camera head, sometimes they do break. Those things you usually can't fix in the field. Usually the companies that make them, uh, proprietary, uh, you know, design on them, and they want them back in order to be able to fix them. We actually strongly recommend, even if you kink a push rod on a camera system, that you send it to an authorized real estate repair center because we've had experienced people trying to fix their own, okay, doing the well, you know, doing the soldering and doing the gluing and all that kind of stuff. Frankly, if you send it to one of our repair centers, it's love that. We're love better. that. Uh, if you want, we'll send you the parts. But again, We've had some experience with this. We actually have somebody fix it for you. As far as the snake style machines, usually nothing much goes wrong with them. To give you the whole idea, I mean, even with the cameras, the flex shafts, the jetters that we have, the snake style machines, all the other stuff that we sell, electronics and metal, all the simple stuff that we sell. And we sell all across the country. We're into Supply Times you know, Magazine. We're number one in wholesale all across the country. At any given time, we have three customer service reps on the phone. If we had major problems, and I think this goes for probably most of the drain cleaning companies out there, if we have major problems, we would have 
a hundred of them, right? Yes. So we don't. And most of the calls are, where's my stuff? It's not like, oh, I had this go wrong. Most of the time it's, I, I want my stuff now. Where is it? So it's like, oh yeah, it's halfway there, you know, wait another day and you'll have it. But uh, that's where most of the calls come in. So, you know, you think about that for a while. When I first started with General, I, you know, I saw how much they were shipping out how many customer service reps we had on, on, on the phones. I say, can we cover all the calls? He says, oh, yeah. So, yeah, so there, there's that. Most of the stuff, you can fix it yourself. Most of the stuff we make, with the exception of the cameras and some of the some of the high, uh, high pressure water jetters. Then, yeah. Gabriel Daniel Nestelin Nestelin says, hello, how are you doing? Okay. Uh, Paul, hey, uh, thank you, sir, for all your videos. Without you, knowing you've saved me so much money. Uh, I love that. That's good. And, and, and that's part of why I do what I do too. And, and it's great to have Ferguson. I see the logo pop up behind us. Look, Ferguson helps me do this. So it, it's teaching you about great stuff. So that's, that's fantastic. Andrew Renner says, I have trouble with my math. It's going to be a big deal if I want to be a plumber and having trouble with measuring. You know, it's, it's not. Andrew, it's just like anything else. You, you, you learn to tie your shoes. In the beginning, that's hard. Wait, I got to remember where these strings go and how they go through and which loop to pull here and which loop to do this. Math is the same way. How, how do I add this? How do I do this? How do I do this? And these days, even with modern technology, we, we've got phones, we've got computers, we've got our construction calculators. There's so many different things that are out there to help us do it. Don't let math be your reason for not trying plumbing. We don't do a lot of it. Um, I mean, we do a lot of things that taken intelligence and we're trained a lot to do things just like tying your shoe. You learn how to set an anchor. You learn how to use a level. You learn how to use a flexible router. It's, you learn the right way to do it and you're going to be amazing at it. And don't let math slow you down. Homer Sears says, thanks from Atlanta, Georgia, for all the information you provide. You know, the, the neat thing is, look, that's what this is all about. Product knowledge to me, ever since you are going to laugh. Ever since I was a cosmetologist and saw people come in and talk about product for hair and why it was designed and why it was made and what benefits and the best way to use it, how not to use it to, or ways not to use it to save people money, I started learning more about plumbing and plumbing products. We get into the trade to become a tradesman. Most plumbers, as soon as they get their plumbing license, they're done. They never learn another thing. As for most plumbers, that is the truth. So I realized, look, the more I learn, the more money I make. Mm -hmm. And it's not just plumbing. I'm, I'm learning leadership and management, communications and personalities. And I'm learning things that most plumbers will say, why? You don't need that. Okay. If I keep thinking that, I'm going to keep making more money. <laughs> it is what it is. The more you train yourself, the more value you can provide to your employer or your customers, the more money you make. Andrew says, what would you recommend new construction for someone starting out as a new plumber? Well, you said it. That construction is a great way. Uh, I'd start with residential. It's probably going to be a little bit easier to learn, a little bit slower. Although you can find some commercial jobs that don't move as fast, but normally they're pushing them really, really hard. Uh, what do y'all think about the new Milwaukee chain snake? You know, I was at Milwaukee a couple of weeks ago. They've got a lot of new products that, that are coming out that are great. And, and you know, it, it's neat. Dave's like, look, there's, there's other companies that do stuff yeah. good too. Milwaukee makes a great product. Rigid makes a great product. General makes a great product and they're doing a lot of new things. And it's neat to see. Like I said, I love the fact y'all got a motor built in it. You've got a foot pedal. You've got yeah. things that, okay, the other brands that I've played with that hadn't had, mm -hmm. this makes it nice. Mm -hmm. Nobody's ever saying that, that, look, any of these other products are bad products on bomb. No, no. It's, look at the one that has the, the, the bells and whistles that you want and make it safer for you, make it easier for you to get in position upstairs on a roof, whatever it is. What do you think? Do, do y'all even mess with the other people's products? Yeah, or like, we we're we're going to improve oh, ours. No, we, we look at everything. If we didn't, I mean, there'd be something wrong, right? Yeah. Well, I think Milwaukee is, is a decent product. 
I think the things that I mentioned as as the pluses for ours uh, is where ours sort of like a little bit better than theirs, but but they have a good product. Uh, Differentiation. It's a good company. It's a good company. You bet. Yeah. Matthew Strickland says, thank you. I'll check all my suppliers in Houston. Matthew, good yeah. luck, brother. Great stuff. Uh, Sean Strong actually put, thank you, my brother. There's the link to Drain Brain right there and the FR1 that we were talking about. Do the comments today. Look at this. What? Look what a brain says. What about planning? How many pipes does a plumber will use in the building for supplying hot and cold water and drainage? You know, the, the good thing is, McQuaid, most of that is figured out by the engineers and architects that design it. Now, if you go on in plumbing and you learn and grow, you become a certified plumbing designer. There's scales and formulas and, and charts to help you learn all that. But it is really, really good. Uh, and Henry Wakefield says ease of use is very important. Because everything we buy these days is ease of use. How mm -hmm. easy it is to use it. You know, mm -hmm. one of the neat things about Milwaukee going there, their batteries, their, their first battery, their last battery, that they all fit. They, they, they don't. They're not Apple. Hey, we got a new phone. Oh, by the way, there's a new charger. There's a new cable. There's a new interface system. You've got to have all this. Your old one won't match up with this, and this one won't match up. I love that. Look, General's looking ahead. What do, and remember, we talked about this. They talk to plumbers. What do you need? What do you want? What is it that will help you do your job better? And then that's what they're building. A uh, couple more comments here real quick. A uh, shout out to the clog crusher attachment. Well, hey, whatever it does, whatever you want to call it, brother, make it happen. Uh, should an apprentice plumber working to be a journeyman have his own vehicle with tools and equipment? Is it already a professional journeyman or master or what? I'm, I'm going to make this the last one right here, guys. Uh, Dirk, number one, the more tools you have, the better you are, the more value you bring. Now, a lot of companies out there be like, look, you don't supply power tools. You don't need a porta band. You don't need your own drain cleaner. You don't need your own camera. But you know what? When you've got your own camera, when you've got your own flexible router, and that's yours and that's in your truck. Now, normally you're not going to drive your truck to a job. But when I've got a plumbing van and I want to be 100% efficient, I want to make sure I have every tool that I need. And at the end of the day, that's really what it gets. Uh, so I'm not going to get through all the rest of it. Uh, oh, that, there was a direct right there. Uh, thank you for always pushing us to learn more every day. Uh, Carlos, thank you very much. Uh, I, I love what I get to do. So first of all, Dave Dunbar, thank you for being here. Oh, no, uh, my pleasure. This, I love what I do too. This, this has been amazing. Uh, we'll have this video out that we shot today about the FR100, but we also – to talk about the hydrogenic as if you're not providing a hydrogenic service, a camera service, a drain cleaning service, and tying all the four of those together and say, this is just what we do. This is how we do it. Give them a flat rate price, do what you have to do, but then you're, you're giving them peace of mind. You're giving them assurance that what you did worked and, and you can show them this is your drain now. It's not stopped up. It's clean. We have no problems. I do a lot of stuff like that. This video was sponsored by Ferguson. Go check out ferguson.com. They have all the equipment we're talking about. Sean put a link into it a uh, while ago. I don't know if I put that up there or not. I'm going to jump here and then do that. There it is right there. So now it's pinned up to the top. Uh, go check it out. Uh, this video is also sponsored by General Pipeline. That's what it's all about. Uh, if you learn to do things, other plumbing companies around you are not doing. You learn to provide a better product, a better service. That's what it's all about. So a special thanks today to Ferguson and to General Pipe Cleaners for coming in. Uh, we're kind of out in the woods here outside of that. They came in town, hung out, got to do some work while you were here, and then go have breakfast and talk and come in and do this. It's been fantastic. Sean Strong, if you're here Still, thank you very much for everything you do. Love having you in here as a moderator, even if you are not smart enough to know Texas Longhorns are the best team. So, 
So what's, what's the deal with this? I mean, I noticed you have this uh, cotton ball ball from 1974. You know, hey, it's a Texas helmet. Longhorn football fan. It's it, what it's all about. Uh, Texas football. So we got a great game coming up tonight against Alabama. I'm picking it right here. Texas is going to win. <laughs> okay. It's going to be a closer game than anybody. So there's my hot sports opinion. Hey, thank you for coming, brother. I, I do. No problem. I appreciate it. It was my, uh, my pleasure. It's been a blast. That's fun. But thanks, everybody, for using our product. We appreciate it. Don't be focusing about getting some of the things we talked about here today. Thank you. Click on the link on top. Yeah. Learn more about it. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, helping you make money in the trades.